Hey guys, welcome back to the Learn AP Calc series here at Learn AP. In this video, we're going to go over the first derivative test. So we'll talk about finding critical points, finding relative extrema using the first derivative test, how to speak derivative, go over that a little later, and then absolute maximum and minimum on an interval. Alright, so let's start by talking about finding critical points. A critical point is simply where a function's derivative is equal to zero or undefined. To find a function's critical points, take a derivative and then find the values of x where f prime of x equals zero or undefined. So pretty straightforward, but do remember this because a lot of times um, that will come up, but it's easy to forget. All right. So let's talk about finding relative extrema using the first derivative test. Relative extrema are points where the function is increasing on one side of the point and decreasing on the other. So here on the graph of y equals x squared at x equals zero, to the right of this point our function is increasing, and to the left it's decreasing. So thus we would say we have a relative extrema at x equals zero. Now you can get more specific. I can say that x equals 0 is a relative min, or if I had, say, um, y equals negative x squared, I could say I had a relative max at x equals 0. So how do we find relative extrema? Well, the first thing you're going to need to do is determine a function's critical points, which I just talked about. And so once you have a function's critical points, use the first derivative test to determine whether you have a relative min or a max. So let's see what this would look like here for y equals x squared. So first we're going to find our critical points, dy dx equals 2x, set that equal to 0. I find that 0 is a critical value. And now I'm going to want to set up my table for the first derivative test, and this is how I like to do it. So here I'll write my critical value, and here I have x, and here I have f prime of x. So essentially just pick a value to the left of 0, negative 1. Pick a value to the right of 0, 1. So f prime of 1 is 2, and f prime of negative 1 is negative 2. And since this and this have different signs, 0 is a relative extrema. If these had the same signs, it would not be. Because again, on one side it's increasing, on one side it's decreasing. If these were the same sign, it'd either be decreasing to, on both sides or increasing on both sides. And so here I can say that this is a relative min because I'm decreasing on the left and increasing on the right, while a relative max would be increasing on the left, decreasing on the right. All right, so now let's talk about speaking derivative for the first derivative test. On the AP test, if you had, say, done this and said x equals 0 is a relative min, you would get points off. Even though you did the correct work, you have to explain why that is a relative min or max. So I've given an example, and I'll sort of walk you through the, lo the logic. Since f prime of 0 equals 0, c is a critical point on f of x. Since f prime of 1 is greater than 0, and f prime of negative 1 is less than 0, the point 0 comma 0 is a relative minimum on the function f of x. So what I'm doing here is I'm first saying that this point 0 is critical, and next I'm saying that to the right of it, my derivative is greater than 0, and to the left of it, my derivative is less than 0. Therefore, this point is a relative min on the function f of x. So that's sort of how you have to explain yourself when you find a derivative using the first derivative test. Note that I bolded and italicized the word relative. You should not say that it is a minimum 
because that would imply absolute minimum, you want to say relative min or relative max. And so with sort of any other um, critical point or extrema that you're finding, you're going to want to follow the same format that I outlined here on the AP test. All right, so now let's talk about finding absolute min and max on an interval. So to find a function's absolute max or min on an interval, you must first find f of x's critical points in the interval. So we don't care about the critical points outside the interval, just the ones inside the interval. Next, we want to determine the value of f of x at said critical points. Note that it's not important whether it's a max or a min, just plug it into the function at that critical point. Common mistake to make here is to plug it into the derivative and get zero, but no, you want to plug it into the function. We want to know the value of the function at the critical point. So after that, you're going to plug in the value of our endpoints into f of x. So we want to see what f of x is at our endpoints. And then the points where f of x is the largest out of all the values you found is the absolute max on the interval. And the value where f of x is the smallest of the values you found is the absolute min on the interval. So I'll take a look at what this looks like. Find the absolute max for y equals sine x on the interval pi over 6 to 2 pi. So if you think you know what to do, pause your video, unpause when you think you found the solution. Otherwise, you can just watch me walk you through it. So here, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to find my critical points on the interval. y prime equals cosine x. Cosine x equals 0. So where does cosine of x equal 0 on the interval pi over 6 to 2 pi? Well, it's going to equal 0 at x equals pi halves and x equals 3 pi halves. Whoops. So next we're going to want to plug this into our function. Remember, not into the derivative. So our function is sine of x, so I'll plug these in. So at pi over 2, sine of pi over 2, and this equals 1. I'm sorry, not negative 1, 1. At 3 pi halves, sine 3 pi halves, again just plugging it into the function, equals negative 1. Next we're going to plug in our endpoints. So at pi over 6, sine pi over 6 equals 1 half. That's just a unit circle, just know that. And at 2 pi, sine of 2 pi equals 0. And so the question is asking for the absolute max. So which of these values has the highest value? It's obviously this one at pi over 2. So I can say at pi over 2 comma 1 is the absolute max. So again, all we're doing, finding critical values, plugging, it, plugging them into the function, plugging in our endpoints, and then seeing which ones are the largest or the smallest, depending on whether we want to find the absolute max or min. Alright, so that brings me to today's challenge problem. Using the first derivative test, find all relative extrema for the function y equals 2x to the fourth minus 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 14. And then write your answers as you would on the AP test. The solution is on our website, learn-ap.com, and I'll also include a direct link in the description. If you guys found this video helpful, please leave a like and be sure to subscribe for future content coming out. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates about our new videos and live streams, which we do every Sunday where we answer your questions about AP Calc. Links for that stuff will all be in the description. 
Leave a comment if you're still confused about anything, or also any other comments on the video in general. Other than that, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.